the premier online speed chess tournament. A knockout filled with tension, drama, quick tactics, and shocking moments. Oh my gosh! For the last seven years and counting, the best blitz and bullet players in the world have flocked to chess.com to prove their worth at this format. <gasps> Excitement reigns every year God. with major upsets and intense battles. This year, 12 invitees and four qualifiers face off for the title. Dozens have tried, but only two have ever worn this crown. Magnus makes it look easy. He, he, made it. Over. he wins the speed chess championship fifth in a row. Who will be this year's Blitz King? It's time to find out. Welcome to the 2023 Speed Chess Championship, presented by Coinbase. Welcome back to the 2023 Speed Chess Championships, presented by Coinbase. We are excited to welcome Coinbase as the presenting partner of the Speed Chess Championships. This year's event is sure to be a treat, and I'll be joined today by Grandmaster Benjamin Bach. Benjamin, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, Eric. Happy to be here with you. Uh, yeah, as you said, it's the start of a new season, and what a matchup we have today. We have Hikaru Nakamura against Yu Yang Yi. Eric, how do you feel about this matchup? I mean, pretty much every time Hikaru plays, even in the first rounds of these events, I do watch it. Uh, I find it a little bit relatable where Hikaru is playing, generally one of the underdogs, and uh, try to see how many upsets can be scored um, or how many wins in a row Hikaru is going to go for. Yeah, no, for sure. But, Hikaru is definitely a hefty favorite in this matchup. Yeah. Let's have a very quick look at the bracket, Eric. Is there any matchup that stands out to you? Because in this one, Hikaru is a big favorite, but there are certainly some matchups that are definitely going to be close. Yeah, like, I mean, this field this year looks to me like the strongest one ever, ever assembled. Um, I am not as familiar with Yu Yangi's game online. And as a result, I definitely consider this one of the more, like, uh, imbalanced first round matchups. Just a lot of unknowns there, but we know Hikaru has been in top form online recently. And um, the only people I can really see upsetting him would be some of those very top uh, online online players. And, and I don't have Yangi in that category. Uh, as of yet. Yeah, no, me neither. I think the only one that really has a good chance against Hikaru is, of course, uh, Magnus. We, we look forward to potentially seeing them in the final again. But, uh, Eric, let's have a look at the game analytic, anal analytics of this matchup. Yeah, we're thrilled to have Deloitte, uh, a leader in their field, as an official partner of the Speed Chess Championships. Their dedication to excellence aligns perfectly with the ethos of chess and the chess.com mission to grow the game in the sport of chess. Deloitte is now the official insights partner of the SEC, so let's dive into the Deloitte game analytics. Right, so we see that their overall blitz head-to-head -head is that Hikaru's had 29 wins, 5 draws and 9 losses against Yu Young Yi. You know, they're players who have had a worse record, they've never played in Bullet and honestly that's one thing that could be a little bit worrisome for Yu Young Yi. I don't really see him as a very experienced Bullet player. Also, this is Yu Yangi's debut in the SCC Championship. Yeah, I don't don't recall playing him in any of the bullet events that Chess.com has hosted, and it even I even remember watching maybe a couple of years ago, maybe when Ding was playing, that he had some internet issues, and in bullet, that's usually uh, you know if internet issues there, it uh, it's game over. So hopefully, no no internet issues. I have seen that a couple times from from the Chinese players. But uh, yeah, um, you never know these days with people in Bullet. They might be playing on their private accounts. Um, there's so many players that are better at Bullet than I would have would have expected. Yeah, no, for sure. And one plus one is always a little bit different than one plus zero. In one plus zero, your speed is really the most important thing. If you don't have that, you're just gonna lose way too many games on time. But with, with one plus one, it's really all about your intuition. And Eric, let's have a very quick look at our smarter chess prediction. Yeah, that's a pretty, if you ask me ahead of time, 20, 20 and a half to seven and a half. It's a pretty big margin, but we've seen Hikaru win with even, you know, bigger numbers than that. So I think I agree with that. The one plus one score, maybe, 
Maybe that's where Hikaru is actually going to be even stronger, but makes sense to me. Right, right. and it gives Hikaru a 95% win probability. Eric, what should Yu Yang Yi to give himself the best chance uh, for a win against Hikaru in this matchup? Well, I think one good thing is because he doesn't play that much online, he doesn't have that psychological disadvantage that you see some players face when they're playing Hikaru because we've seen him, we've played him so many times, lost him so many times. He might not have that. So just going in with that like open mind, starting off strong, not getting phased or tilted, um, just trying to frustra uh, frustrate Hikaru uh, over the board. Um, that yeah, might be one sure. thing he has going for him. Yeah, and I think for Yu Yang Yi, it's also really important to keep it close in the 5 plus 1 and 3 plus 1 portions. Hikaru can really run away in the 1 plus 1, but he's got to keep it close before it comes to that. Yeah, I think always when, when you're playing Hikaru, you got to avoid the tilt. But let's take a look at the uh, community predictions. Right, so 99% of our community predicts that this is going to be a win for Hikaru. Only 1% predicts a win for Yu Yang Yi. 5,411 people predict a win for Kara and 44 brackets have predicted a win for Yu Yang Yi. I am... Um, well, I'm hopeful for those 44. They are pretty bold to uh, bet against Ikaru. That's one of the things. All the years of the SEC, you generally would not be doing well if you bet against Ikaru. Yeah, and he's generally going pretty deep. And as we see, the players are getting ready. Hikaru is also streaming on, on Kick Channel. Yu Yang Yi in, in the Zoom call. So, Eric, Hikaru starting out with one with white pieces. What do you expect from him? Do you expect him to open up with E4, D4, Knight of 3, maybe in English? I guess it depends how he's feeling, but English is, is uh, generally one of his, his nice options for keeping the game imbalanced. I expect him to play pretty much everything, though, um, by the time this uh, match is underway. Right, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him play, let's say, Knight of 3, followed by B3. That's often how he likes to start off these matchups. I think Ikaru generally does not prepare for the SEC. Maybe we can expect some preparation from Yu Yang Yi? I think so, but um, if you were preparing against Ikaru and you look at his online games, it's going to be a lot of work because between all the events, the SECs, the Title Tuesdays, he's played pretty much everything, and I think... You know, openings are not going to be the main issue when you face Hikaru. It's the problems he, he gives you over the board. But I think we're about to begin the first round. And, uh, well, that wasn't uh, one of the opening options, Benjamin, A3. No, look at the disrespect. He opens up with A3 against Yu Yang Yi and takes a sip from his cup. See Yu Yang Yi going for uh, a setup with Knight of 6, E6, and D5. And Hikaru going with B4. Eric, what do you make of this whole setup? Just trying to play some chess. I think uh, Hikaru wants these games to be, um, you know, like just fighting over the board, not too much theory, and, and being able to test Yang Yi's, you know, resolve in, in some uh, tough positions. Uh, I think he's just looking to play some, some good old-fashioned blitz without too much theory against his generally well-prepared opponent, I'd say. Yu Yang Yi's mm -hmm. usually, usually known for that, so, yeah, nothing too theoretical. Right, I see Yu Yang Yi going for a very set, solid setup with Bishop B7, Kings at Castles, and B6. These positions would be pretty standard, pretty standard if White's pawns would be in A2 and B3. Here with the pawn on B4, you know, it gives White a little bit more space on the queen side, so it hasn't worked out in the worst way for Hikaru. And Eric, I wanted to ask you, so we see that Hikaru is streaming, I mean, we both stream. What do you make of this decision? Do you think it's going to help him, or do you think it might distract him a little bit? If it was anybody else, I'd be like, don't do it. It's going to take away from your chess. But with Hikaru, I mean, he's had some of his best results on, on stream. So in this case, it looks like it really does uh, relax him or, or help, help with the results. But for most people, you know, we're not Hikaru and it's just an additional uh, distraction. Yeah, and we see a trade on d5, the move queen c2 now by Hikaru. He could be aiming for a move like h4, followed by a potential knight g5 to start some business on the king side. Usually that isn't that easy to deal with uh, for black, but Hikaru takes on d5 first. Do you think a move like h4 is going to come later, or is going to play it very solid? I think the move b5 is, is a more indication that he's playing it very solid here. Yeah, yeah, after b5, I think white's going to, you know, I don't know, play knight d4, just fight for the c6 square, but play a bit slower. I wanted to ask uh, Benjamin. We have new uh, viewers here who aren't so familiar with Yu Yang Yi's game, as as we mentioned, this first time playing in the SEC. Like, how would you describe? If we're trying to like advertise the match. How would you describe his style and uh, in chess and and how 
why he's a dangerous player. Yeah, Yu Yi, very strong grandmaster from China. He's rated around 2720. Um, he's generally pretty well prepared with the white pieces and the black pieces. I'd say overall he's a solid player, but give him the opportunity and he can also play very aggressively. And Eric, I am not a big fan of what Hikaru is doing here in the opening. He's clamping down on that c5 break, but now that he's playing knight d4, he's having trouble developing that light square bishop on f1 as they will always hang the pawn on g2. Yeah, he's playing uh, very risky here, not going for uh, any early, early castle, but I think Hikaru does that sometimes. I mean... The nice thing with his style, he, he tries something, he tries to play maybe aggressive. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, he can switch to, you know, other openings, other systems. And, and we've seen even when he falls behind in a match, his ability to just rack up the wins and, and, and climb back up is, is second to none. So um, he can afford to take a few more risks with his, with his uh, style, I'd say. And uh, yeah, he's resolved that tension, that pressure on the G2 pawn. Now he goes bishop to E2. And the question really is, Eric, is that pawn on C6 an asset or a weakness? We see here the move queen D3 by Yu and Yi. Could we potentially be aiming for a quick repetition with bishop to queen E5, bishop F3? He choruses no and goes rook to C1, but now it's going to be difficult for him to castle. And perhaps now Yu and Yi has the time to bring one of his rooks into the game. Yeah, I mean, maybe white should have tried to repeat, but... Um... This, this is the kind of position where, as you as described, like Yu Yang Yi is a very solid player. He's going to just slowly, slowly, you know, reroute that knight and, and make some progress. I think this posi position is very comfortable for Black for, uh, for a first game for, for Yu Yang Yi. Yeah, no, for sure. No weaknesses for Black. And King E2 by Hikaru. I mean, I don't know, Eric. I have the feeling that he's playing around a little bit too much. We're seeing the move E5 by Yu Yang Yi, threatening E4, now Rook E8. I don't know, I don't like this king on e2, it, and black doesn't have any weaknesses. I, I feel like Yu Yang Yi's best chances are in the opening and in the early middle game. Hikaru's real strength comes later, especially in the time scrambles. But this opening has really been uh, all Yu Yang Yi. Yeah, I mean, this is a perfect opportunity um, for, for Yu Yang Yi to, to like, get some like confidence. This position, he sees the king on e2, black's fully developed, I mean... I think where there's going to be a disadvantage is when the players are low on time and we have sharp positions. But here, Yu Yang Yi, totally comfortable, fully developed. He's, uh, uh, he's, he's doing real well here. But we know who the slippery is, you know. Hikaru is very slippery in, in these positions where his king is on. I mean, he's played the Bong Cloud before, you know, successfully. So, king on E2, you still have to look for some concrete breakthrough if you're... Yu Yang Yi here. Maybe f5 and knight f6 or something, but um, try to put some pressure on White's position. Yeah, no, that one definitely makes sense. He went knight d5 to tag the rook, uh, which had to move over to keep protecting the pawn on a3. And even though I like Yu Yang Yi's position, look at the clock, Eric. He's already down a minute. Like you said, Hikaru is the slippiest player in the game, and you definitely want to try not to fall too far behind us. He is going to find resources, he is going to find a way to hang on, and potentially maybe even swing this one around. Yeah, I mean, um, Black being down 90 seconds at some point, he's going to have to look at the clock. I don't think he's, you know, you're playing your first game, you're not always taking a look at the time, you're just making sure you're not blurring the pieces, getting all comfortable, but against Hikaru, as soon as he, Hikaru has like a slightly worse position, I notice you know he plays quickly and he puts pressure everywhere else on the board. Um, so here, but it's definitely not better here or super comfortable yet. But the pressure's on Black with the, with the time situation, and that's going to be definitely a recurring theme today. And I'm sure Hikaru now going for a thing. He's still up on the clock, but it's dwindling a little bit. Maybe you move like queen c4 to put some pressure on that knight. He can also bring this rook into the game, but maybe what Yu Yang Yi wants to do is go for this move queen h3. That might be the reason behind that move queen e6. He goes rook d6 first to put pressure on the pawn on c6, but it's always going to be very difficult to increase the pressure on that pawn, as white always has pressure on your knight on d5. Yeah, I think, I mean, black is happy with most of the end games. if bishop takes d5, even taking with the rook. Um, but uh, I don't think black wants to trade queens, you know, immediately right now at the same, either because then, then white's king position is kind of justified. 
uh, on e2 once the queens are off no problem mm -hmm. and we see the move h4 by ikaru queen e7 by yu yang yi i like i like black's position but it is a little bit difficult to see how he's really going to improve maybe something like king h8 followed by that plan that you mentioned earlier with f5 knight of six that brings a potential e4 push in and but that being said, it's even more difficult to see how white is ever going to improve. Hikaru goes for rook to h1. What do you think he's planning with that one? I think he's letting, he's just moving back and forth, just letting essentially a Yu Yang Yi uh, decide where the position's headed. Because, yeah, as you mentioned, black, black's kind of dictating things here. White doesn't really have any targets. Um, the queen side is closed, and the e5 pawn is not really uh, accessible very easily for, for Hikaru. So. No real natural targets here, just moving back and forth and, and letting Yu Yang Yi uh, decide. Right, and we see Yu Yang Yi moving back and forth here with Queen E7 to G6. Hikaru now has moved his king over to G2. I think definitely a better square than E2. I mean, if this default ever opens up, you could easily get checkmated. And again, like Yu Yang Yi is struggling. I, I like his position, but he's struggling to come up with a plan, and that's why he's also falling further behind on the clock. Yeah, he's got to decide internally at some point, you know, there might be two things going on. Like, hey, do I repeat moves? Am I okay with the draw this first game? Or, no, I mean, there's the other mentality where he's told himself, maybe before the match, I need to try to be Hikaru early on and get rid of that psychological barrier, um, take, take some risks. Because Hikaru definitely gives you decent positions. That's one thing in Blitz. He'll play some uh, funny openings, or, or, or but the position will always have some fighting chances for, for both sides. For sure, yeah. And with this move, Queen G4, Eric, Hikaru sacrificed the pawn on C6, but Yu Yang Yi did not take it. And I think he made a very good point. Even though Yu Yang Yi is playing with the black pieces, it's very natural that you feel like, hey, I'm playing with black in the first game. You know, I'm happy with a draw here. But I think you have to take all of the chances you can get against Hikaru. So if you have a good position with white, with black, you're going to have to go for it, as there will be games where uh, those chances might not be there. Yeah. Yeah, now, I mean, now we're seeing the position change up a little bit. Black would love to move the queen and push this f7 pawn up to f5 dislodging that bishop, but queen e6 was one of the only ways to do it because black's queen has no other safe square. Yeah, so Ikaru trades the queens and goes g4, clamping down on that f5 push, but maybe Yu Ying Yi can prepare now with the move g6, although there Hikaru could go g5 himself. We see him going rook to d6, but Eric, I don't think it's a real threat for black to take on c6, as white can always double up the rooks on a c-file and get the c-pawn back. Yeah. Um, Hikaru is hoping for knight takes c6. He's banking on long term pressure on the c file where you know you lose the c6 pawn, but you're going to eventually win the, win the c7 pawn with some c file pressure. So just setting up some traps, you could say. Um, ways for black to, to mess up the position a bit. Exactly. We see it should be fine can... still, but Hikaru's probably thinking, you know, this is not. This is not a risky thing to try. Play quickly, shuffle a bit on the queen side, and uh, you know, see if Yang Yi can, can handle playing down 15, 20 seconds. Right, and we see Bishop 5, rook 7. Now Hikaru could trade and go into a double rooking game. This pawn on e5 is a little bit weak. If Hikaru can get his king over to e4, that looks pretty unpleasant for black. And he's up 10 seconds, and there goes the king. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how he does it, but... Getting into an endgame where white's king is already on e4, d5, that's not going to be uh, easy to hold at all for, for, for Yang Yi. I mean, once Hikaru gets active, that's usually not a, not a good sign. He doesn't give you much uh, breathing room. Right, he did sack that c6 pawn again. Now he goes back to, with his rook to c4. If Yu Yang Yi can get the king to e6 here, this should be pretty fine for black. And wait, actually, Eric, if he can get the rook to d5 and c5, there could also be chances mm -hmm. for black. Is he preparing king d6 right here? I guess there's... I think so, yeah. And if d4, I don't know if f5 check works, but then maybe rook. Black has king to make a tough choice here. Followed yep. by b5. He's down to four seconds. He didn't... Oh, that's a blunder, rook g3. Yes, rook... Yes. Nikaru immediately sees that, of course. Yeah, I take the pawn on g7, and you're not hanging on to that c7 pawn. I think eventually... You're going to drop it. So, looks like Hikaru is going to win this first game. And Yu Yang Yi loses on time. A tough position, but 
you really try you really have to try to avoid that to just lose games like that that's so frustrating the entire game black is doing fine maybe on the better side of things but just in a bit of a time scramble hikaru outmaneuvered uh yangi's you know king pretty pretty comfortably there and that's uh that's not the start <laughs> those are some right, good positions yeah. for for black yeah, that was a completely fine game for, for Yu and Yi. I think he just had to keep a little bit more time on the clock. He also had to be a little bit more confident. And in some cases, he could have taken the opponent C6. I felt like he played a little bit too passively. Also, going for a move repetition earlier. So let's see what he's going to do with the white piece. He goes for the Spanish for Knights. Yeah, I, um, Yang Yi, as, as you mentioned earlier, very well prepared. He knows some systems, you know, pretty comfortably. And I think he's mainly like e4 player i don't think we'll see as much d4 or, or other openings today but he does know his classical e4 stuff very very well mm -hmm. and we have a pretty typical position here for the Rui lopez wide maneuvering their knight at g3 now he could go for the d4 push and that's what he does knight g6 by Karu h3 pretty typical move to stop bishop to g4 and the difficult thing for black is that white right now has more space in the center and it's often going to be difficult for black to go for that same d5 push. So generally white is considered to be a little bit better after rook d1 followed by let's say bishop e3 and queen e2. Yeah, a little bit more space, but it is going to be a maneuvering middle game. And unlike the, the last game, I think Yu's going to have to make sure to be a bit more mindful of the clock uh, because even in these solid, equal looking positions, just one slip up against Hikaru when you're down to five, 10 seconds, like the previous game and, and the game's over. So. Um, he knows this position play quickly right and Yu and Yi played for the maneuver with bishp 3 queen e2 and rook 81 and i like what he has done on the queen side he's pushed the pawns up to a4 and b5 so then now this move bishp 6 is a little bit uncomfortable to deal with are you going to go b3 well then black can grab the open a file uh you can go bishop b1 but the bishop is a little bit more passive there or go a3 but then your entire queen side is frozen so even though white has more space in the center he found find a pretty good way to uh, uh, grab some space himself. Yeah, I was going to say, all those options you provided, A3 or B3, none of them looked good. I think Yang Yi, I agreed with that, and just going with four for knight F5 with uh, probably some sort of bishop takes H6, you know, uh, in the cards. Yeah, no, I like knight F5 by Yu Yang Yi, a very direct approach. I think bishop takes H6 is a threat, and it's not clear to me how Hikaru should deal with it. I mean, he can take the knight on F5, but white will recapture and this knight has to move back to the passive f8 square and perhaps white can even consider sacrificing there so let's see what Ikaru is going to do i mean he is known to be super resilient even when he's forced with his back against the wall yeah i mean hikaru if, if he definitely knows bishop takes h6 is is uh is threatened right now so if he allows it then that means he's calculated he's comfortable with the consequences um but, uh, you know, Hikaru's strength, like Yu Yang Yi, very good calculation, you know, technical player. But uh, I think Hikaru doesn't mind testing him early on. And, and if Bishop takes H6 is, leads to a, um, a fighting position, he might encourage that. So I wouldn't be surprised to see something besides Bishop takes F5. Right, and Eric, look at the clock. Yu Yang Yi now up 90 seconds. So do you think in that first game he was maybe shaking off a little bit of rust? Hikaru probably also dealing with some opening problems here, but this one is definitely looking better for Yu Yang Yi. Yeah, I think, I mean, um, it's still early on in the opening stage, and Yang Yi's going to be pretty well prepared in a lot of those positions. It's just later in the middle game when he's outside of the opening that I'm a little uh, concerned about his time usage. But... Um, I do expect him to be pretty well prepared in these E45 systems. Right, and we see Hikaru trading on a 5 follow by knight of 8. Is Yu Yang Yi going to go for the sacrifice with bishop takes h6? I guess the idea is that after black takes, you can maybe include capturing on e5 as well and then take with the queen on h6. The black queen on d8 will be hanging, also the black king on g8 is exposed, but after something like queen e7, to me it's not 100% obvious how white is going to continue the attack. But if you don't go for it, black can go for e4 followed by d5, and, and there black looks to be completely fine. Yeah, I think here white needs to open up the position somehow. So taking even on e5 once might be might be the way to play, and then follow up with g4. But 
Yang Yi definitely needs to keep the position open. You got the bishop pair here, allowing black to play e4 is not is not in the spirit of the position. So anything but that. And he's gone for it. He's sacked on e5 and traded on e5 and now queen e7 by Hikaru. He has to keep defending the knight on f6. So let's see what white is going to do here. Maybe something like g4, g5 attacking the knight. If the knight moves, you have f6, tagging the queen and threatening a checkmate. Definitely some issues here for Ikaru, and Yu and Yi has the time to come up uh, with something good. Yeah, knight g5 also. I was looking at just to keep keep black uh, stuck there, but um, it's not totally clear to me what what the threat is. I think Yang Yi probably has to just bank on there being compensation and like an initiative here. I don't see any any knockout punch. I don't know about you, Benjamin, but I see a me check, neither, and yeah. that's about it. Yeah, you have a check over here, but Ikaru just goes king h8, and if you check again, he can block with one of the knights. So, it's it's not obvious to me. I, I do like the fact that Yu Ying Yi went for it. Again, like, you only get so many opportunities against Hikaru. He's often going to provoke you a little bit, and you just have to go for it in, in such cases. Um, so, so, let's see what he's going to come with. I still like this idea of g4. Let's say black goes e4, there's g5. The thing for Ikaru, though, is that he doesn't have to move this knight. He can protect it with his other knight, and in case white takes, you can recapture it with either the knight or with the queen, and it's not too bad, and, and there we see the move g4 on the board. Yeah, the g5 move you mentioned, I mean, g5 and then f6 coming. What, uh, what am I missing? What's Ikaru planning after g5 here? I think he has to go knight h to h7, and there we go. So in case white takes, you can now recapture. I think with the queen, that looks completely fine to me. You pretty much force a queen trade there. The knight on f6 will defend the pawn on e4. So maybe Yu Yang Yi has to delay taking on f6 and move this knight first, but he takes on f6 right away. Yeah, I mean, white's going to go knight g I mean, the problem is there's some opposite bishops and this e3 move at the right time. It how good is that e-pawn for white? Exactly, yeah, he's up uh, this h-pawn and perhaps maybe these doubled f-pawns, but black can also go for a move like a3, taking this pawn over here, and after b4, maybe something like bishop e5, and it's very difficult to protect that pawn on c3, so like you mentioned, with the with the opposite color bishops, Hikaru will have excellent drawing chances here, and he's also up 30 seconds on the clock, so let's see how he will do it. I like the a3 move you mentioned, just to like... Break up the pawns. Definitely looks like a little unpleasant to, to deal with. But I think Hikaru is just thinking here, like, he realizes he's losing the e-pawn, but how can he make it as messy as possible and make white's, you know, conversion as, uh, as hard as possible? Right, he's played rook a to d8, so his idea is that in case white takes, um, eventually he can include a trade on d1. So let's see, maybe Yu Yang Yi has to take on d8 first himself. I think yeah. in this game it's going to be very unlikely that Hikaru will win, especially since there is always that one second increment. But, you know, a draw with the black pieces is also a fine result here. He keeps his lead in the match, and then he can try again with white. Yeah. Can black go rook d2 here? Uh, that's what I'm curious about. Rook d2, rook e2... Uh -huh, and just trade off everything and hold the the end game without like the rooks and and the bit and the knights. Yeah, is it is it uh, is it holding? Good question. Good question. I don't know. I mean, it's it seems rather risky as after all of these trades, all of your pawns are on light square, so it's very yeah. easy for them to to drop off. I think if black uh, keeps the pawns even on the queen side, it's probably a draw. But if white goes up a pawn on the queen side, I think it should just be winning because white also has this past h pawn. So that would be a little bit risky for Ikaru, who's actually in real danger of losing this game. He's also down 15 seconds and he settles on the move rook d5 to pick up that pawn on f5. Yeah, so if knight f5, black's going to take on f5, and if bishop takes. Uh, yeah, bishop takes e4, knight takes e4. I think I'd do bishop takes. I would keep the knight. Always have this impression, you know, having the knight in the end game. I'm gonna have some tricks, and, and I have the extra pawn. And then with, uh, yeah, if I take, there we go. Uh, and we see the move rook d2 now by Kar. His idea is that in case of rook e2, now you can trade and go bishop f4, attacking the knight. So Yu Yi takes on c6 first and goes rook e2 a3 by Hikaru. 
a tricky little move. Now you never want to trade as black gets his pawn on b2, which is going to be queen right after. And we see 94 by Yu Young Yi. Does this allow Hikaru to just trade everything down and go after the pawn on c3? I think he it should does. just be able to hold there. But maybe Hikaru wants to go for more and play knight h5, knight f4 or something. I guess it depends. But somehow Hikaru t made that like very, you know, very comfortable to hold by playing this rook b2, a3 idea. Once that pawn's on a3, I don't see how white can try for anything. Yeah, now it's just a draw. He takes an e2. Eric, I wanted to point out this real quick. After, yeah, it's just going to be a draw now. But after bishop to a5, could Yu Yang Yi have tried taking on b2? Followed by c4. Black gets two passers on b2 and c4, but they're blocked by this bishop. And why now has passed a has passed a pawn and h pawn? Maybe that would give in uh, Yu Yang Yi some chances. That's true. Yeah, you you uh, you bring the king in to support the a pawn, I guess, or something. Ah, oh, that's right, so that's a tough one. Yeah, so this one is just going to be a draw, but yeah, let's point that out real quick again. I think this this was a chance for Yu and Yi. It doesn't really seem like White should be risking anything here. I don't know if White has realistic winning chances. Perhaps not, because the bishop stops the pawn. Uh, the king stops this pawn. But, you know, may, maybe this, this could have still offered him some chances. Yeah, I mean, also, I guess, early on, um, he's only down by a game, so he's probably not in panic mode yet. But that, that line you gave... Later on in that match, got to take those th those chances, as we mentioned. Not going to get too many really good positions against Hikaru. At least I don't expect it. So he's probably a bit disappointed, but early right. days. And I was just about to say, like, why hasn't this game ended in a draw yet? But it is the SEC. There is that match clock that we see taking down. And perhaps Hikaru just wants to bleed the clock as much as possible. Uh, give Yu Yang Yi the least chances to ever make a comeback. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Hikaru is a very comfortable favorite in this five-minute portion, but um, that advantage will only increase in the three-minute three, three minute or one-minute portion, so it's in his interest, I guess, to just, like, <laughs> repeat moves, um, shorten shorten the format. And it probably frustrates exactly. opponents. Like, I mean, some some players just don't like repeating moves a million times. They just, you know, they want the draw to happen right there. And there you go, Hikaru... <laughs> Uh, prolongs it with that pawn move. Exactly. Yeah. The one thing he has to be careful of when he put his king on a fade is not to allow White's king to come up to g6. Is then I don't really see how you're pushing. But Yu Yang Yi goes h4, h5. That actually only makes the game less longer. Uh, while there's no way at all for for White to win. Okay. Now we just have to wait for the 50 move rule to kick in. Hikaru is just gonna put his bishop yep. on any dark square on the board until Chesakon will say it's a draw. You can criticize it, but it is smart if you favor yourself in the other time controls. Even shaving a minute uh, off of the game clock might, you know, be very important in the end. So, um, I think I think Hikaru's happy with this <laughs> this part. Yeah, for sure. And how much time has he already shaved off the clock? Like, I, it's definitely over a minute. I think we're definitely close to to two. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I think Yu Yang is good at like milking some some slightly better positions, and this was an example. Like he was pressing this game, and he was like, you know, let's get rid of this format. I'll take the draws where I can, and punish him. Punish him when it gets to the three minute aspect. All right, now Yu Yang Yi is moving his king over, but I don't think he can ever really do anything. I think for Yu Yang Yi, you just have to accept the fact that this is just a draw. There's nothing to do. He cars bishop on b2, guards the f6 pawn, and the pawn on a3. So I think he should just move his king back to g4 and pre-move bishop e3 to e6. Those are two safe pre-moves because both of those squares are covered. And that way you get this game out of the way as quickly as possible. Well, do you think he's offered Hikaru a draw through the game? controls it's a good some question. players would have I... pressed the draw button by now and then the question is who's offering the draw and who's declining the draw this is a psychological battle you never want to be the one to admit draw right yeah but yeah this one is is definitely going to be a draw now players just moving back and forth hikaru doesn't have to worry about a repetition as Yu Ying Yi has moved his king around maybe now hikaru is doing the math when was the last pawn move? Let me check real quick. That happened on move... Yeah. 
do you have oh and there we have it it finally kicked in so Hikaru before the 50 move roll kicked in let his time run down to his last couple of seconds and now opens up game three with a4 Eric yeah I mean uh trying to throw Yu Yangi off but just to reiterate for for viewers who are wondering why was Hikaru doing that they're playing 90 minutes of this five minute time control then it switches to three minutes and then one minute and Hikaru by prolonging these games just means there's fewer games that are going to be played in that 90 minute uh, 5 1 segment. Right, and we have a bit of a peered setup reverse where White has gotten in this C3 and B4 push. Generally, something you're pretty happy with and something that Black often prevents with A5. Now, Knight of D2, another an orthodox maneuver by Hikaru. Where do you think he's headed with this Knight? I think he's just going to play, you know, e4 at some point, get some sort of fighting fighting position with, with, with tension. Mm-hmm. Bishop g4 by Yu Yi, putting the bishop on h5. He's making it difficult for white to now get that e4 push in. Maybe Koro is going to develop with a move like knight a3. I definitely like Yu Yang's position, and he's got to realize that even with black, he's going to get chances, and if he wants a real shot in this match, he's, he's going to take his chances, especially in the 5 plus 1 portion. Yeah, Hikaru with this opening choice is is clearly saying he's not trying to play the best best openings, and he just wants wants a position because Black should be very happy with with the development in the center here and and let's see yeah if Yu Yang Yi is going to going to pressure try to take advantage of this uh, just open open position. I'd... I, see B5 I think Hikaru is still still feeling 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 his opponent uh, out. Right, he's trying to see how much risk he can take in the opening, how much yeah. he can mess around. Uh, C4, expanding in the center, nice move. Now that now that he's had this pawn on B5, he already has pressure on the pawn on C6, so let's see what he's going to do here. Maybe move like Bishop A3. You have less space for white, so it makes sense to trade off some pieces. I think for Yu Yang Yi, he just has to become a little bit more comfortable with playing Hikaru. I mean, of course, he can be a bit scary, so to speak. He's this uh, online beast and blitz and bullet but you know you just have to play the game you that's how you give yourself the best chance and as we see he's messing around in the opening so you have to try to punish him for that yeah i mean hikaru is really asking for you know black to play something like d4 but uh curious do you consider hikaru the favorite uh or magnus in the sec uh groups or Ferruja? who do you consider in the announced uh you know player list the, the favorite this year yeah, very good question. I mean, given the fact that Hikaru won last year, he also beat Magnus in the Bullet Chess Championship. I'm leaning towards Hikaru, but it's it's never easy to say against uh, against Magnus. Well, what is your take, uh, uh, Eric? Yeah, I consider it probably close to to a 50-50 recent results. Hikaru's got uh, a bit of an edge, but um, the the matches are always so close. So, I but I do consider you know Hikaru just. In previous years, before last year, I would have considered Magnus maybe a slight favorite, but after this year's results in the Bull Chess Championships and, and last year's SEC, I think he's right up there, and it's pretty much neck and neck. Yeah, I know for sure. And I like what Yu Yang Yi is doing here, infiltrating these weakened dark stars with his bishop and his knight. We see Kaur pushing the bishop back with g4. Yu Yang Yi was threatening a little trick with knight takes d3 with the bishop over here, pinning that e2 pawn. But this weakens White's king set a little bit, and Eric, I think Yu Yi is becoming more and more comfortable in this match as he's up forty seconds. Yeah, this is this is a great position for Black. So it's gonna if he can manage the clock there and he's looking for some breakthrough. I, I don't know if that's gonna be pawn to e four, but Black has a space space advantage now. It's clear, and you know some some uh, well placed pieces like this knight on c five. So this is this is very promising for for Yu Yi. We see the move knight b1 by Karo to trade off this bishop on a3. e4 now by Yu Yang Yi, breaking open a center. Yeah. I like this position a lot. I mean, after a trade, this knight is threatening to jump into c3. Hikaru might have to trade all of the knights off, but then he's stuck with this uh, weakened king side over here. Knight b1 also possible, but Yu Yang Yi right now has a free hand on the king side, and he can go for moves like h5. Yeah, no, this 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 is a position. Hikaru's, you know, played knight b1. With no hesitation, it's one of those positions where you know you're much worse as white and you're just going to try to blockade and, and survive on the king side. Let your opponent uh, 
figure out how to proceed. Yeah, but that's the impressive thing about Ikari. He has no problem making moves like Knight B1. No. I think a lot of chess players would really hate to make such a move. He goes Queen B3. Yeah. All right, he's maybe aiming to swing that queen over to the king. So with someone like queen f3, this is definitely Yu Yang Yi's game to win. If he doesn't win this one, it's just going to be really tough. I mean, he's got a much better position with black. He's up on the clock. Uh, he's got a little bit of practice now. So let's see how he will try to put this one away. What do you recommend here? You think black should try to gang up on the e2 pawn or play another move you suggested earlier, h5? Um... Sometimes trying to beat Hikaru is already the first mistake, meaning like I have a position that I really like. I spend all my time trying to find the win instead of maybe slowly building up the position. So I think I think there's a couple you can go for the kill here or you can try to maybe build up on the e-file, double rooks, book target the C2 pawn without spending too many resources. Yeah, and no, that's a tough thing about Hikaru. Like he gets sometimes pushed to the edge quite well, not easily, but that does happen, he gets pushed to the edge, but it's very difficult to push him over the edge. He, he might get a very ugly position, but then he f starts finding w one best move after the other, and it's just very difficult to put him away. So I think you made a very good point. Sometimes it's just better to slowly but surely continue to improve the position, because even though after a move like e3, it feels like there might be something for black, but there probably isn't. So I guess he should just slowly but surely increase the pressure with moves like h5. Yeah. Yeah, h5 or rook e7. e3 is such a provocative move from, from Ikaru, who's really asking Black to, to look at playing pawn to d3, which is maybe what Yu Yang is spending a bunch of time on, but uh, yeah, I I vote for, for h5 or rook e7 just to, just to bring more pieces in. Right, so let's see what Yu Yang is going to do. h5 looks very tempting. Knight g5 perhaps an option as well to threaten to go into f3 or bishop b4. Trade off those bishops. I think taking on e3, he goes b6. Now, that does slowly improve the position, but it looks a little bit timid to me. So let's see how Hikaru is going to try to crawl out of this. Maybe move like rook to e1, so he's a little better prepared when the e-file opens up. Yeah, I mean, white's position looks awful, but uh, rook e1 or rook to e1, you have to just not blunder and let black figure out what to do. If people are like, I mean, this kind of position we're seeing right now, I expect to see a few more times in the match. Yu Yang is a very good player and very capable of getting good, slowly, you know, slightly better positions, or in this case, much better. Um, it's just whether he's going to be able to finish off Yukaru from those uh, from those good positions. That's what I'm curious about because definitely going to get good positions throughout this match. You yeah, know, for sure, we see the move Rook D8, a nice, solid, improving move, and now Hikaru is thinking he's avoided the worst. But it's it's not easy for him to make moves here. His position is is just bad. Like it's difficult to 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 make a good move here for White. Uh, he goes f4. He's really asking for you. You need to play a move like knight g3. Is he gonna do it? Black can also take over here on e3. But definitely a super provocative move here by Karu. I mean, it looks like it should be losing. I'm just trying to find what move that is. Is knight g3 rook f3 the idea? Um, but this should be bad. Just uh, can can black refute it. And knight g3 by Yu Yang Yi on the board. Maybe he wants to follow up with queen h4, eyeing the rook on e1. Hikaru might have some ideas like f5, but that should backfire. So let's see what he's going to do. He goes rook f3. Hmm. All right. Queen h4 now. Is your idea after f5 is just black can play knight takes f5, for example? Or... That should be winning, but I don't see the win exactly. So, takes, takes. Okay, yeah. Karu goes king h2. Now you could just move the knight back, attacking the rook on, on e1. It feels like there should be something here for black, but I don't see the knockout punch just yet. Yeah, it feels like there's something, but the good thing is black is still up on time. So, it didn't burn all, all of his time looking for the win. So, as, as you mentioned, like black can just retreat with knight e4 and ask Karu another question. Where... What are you going to do about that rook on e1? I think he's going to have to move it. I think he should probably move it to someone like e1 or d1. That's when he goes for knight f2 now, taking the rook and knight takes g4. That should be game. Yes. Should. Seize it right away. Okay, so knight takes knight takes g4 check. Hikaru's planning king g1. And then right. there's a bunch of options there. 
to me, Rook takes c3 looks really good. In case you take the Rook, there's Queen f2, followed by Knight takes c3. That's, that's light. That's light out. Yes. He could also go Rook takes e3 right away. Right he away. goes Bishop h7. He's still winning, but he missed an opportunity there to finish the game off right away. Now, I guess you just take the Rook and take on d4. That looks completely crushing, but he's down to 17 seconds. Yeah, I mean, Black was up on time there. That was where Hikaru was like, I'm just going to play quickly. I know I'm going to lose material and hope to get some chances here. But uh, I like the technique I'm seeing here, Benjamin. This is, uh, looks like Black knows with Queen F2 preparing like Rookie 2 or Rookie 1. I mean, um, even with 17 or 12 seconds, Black, Black knows how to, how to finish this game off. Yeah, Queen F2, a nice move by Yung Yi. 17 seconds, not the most time in the world. I think the one thing is, though, is that you want to get this bishop into the game somehow. So maybe with a well-timed g6, 8 seconds, knight c3. Hikaru fighting back, but it's a lot of material. He's down in exchange and upon him. Maybe Yu Yung Yi can also bring that bishop back into the game with f6, followed by bishop g8, and there he goes. Yeah. Uh, but here comes Hikaru Some and 3 tricks. seconds. Rookie 2, rookie 2. He's... Complete rook d2, nice move. Can you take no, bishop d5? Is there and bishop you have d5? To move the king. Bishop d5, bishop d5. Because rook takes g2, you lose a lot of material. Wait, no, this is over. This is over. There's no yeah. move for white. Bishop d5, uh, intermezzo is, is nasty. Yeah, you're going down a full piece here, and black is keeping the queens. So rook d3, he takes and move. Ah, uh, rook e3, he hung the game. Rook e3. Rookie three. Rookie two, and you take because then takes and b seven. Oh my but, goodness! Oh my goodness! But does Hikaru yeah, see Hikaru that? Hikaru lost some time. Hikaru <laughs> lost some time. That's what it said. The Eric, the one time he had a good position in this game, he flies. Yes. You don't make this up. Like usually, it's the other way around. But Hikaru lost his game on time. The one time he had a winning position. Well, the question is, does he know that? Because if you know that, you're going to be a bit more bothered. But if he just lost on time, thinking he's lost, maybe maybe in his head everything is okay. Yeah, maybe he thought like, oh, the position is lost anyway. I'm yeah. just going to let my time run out. But actually, in that last position, it seemed like he was completely winning after rookie three. But maybe he had already mentally given up. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if he, he found out, but... Uh... As we're looking at the camera now, it looks like he's thinking about a previous game. Maybe, maybe he's just realizing that he had rookie three and rook takes, rook takes e four in that position. Anyways, Benjamin, we got a tied tied match, three games. Some people were predicting a total blowout, and you know, based on the positions we've seen, we are going to see you know very competitive games. Yeah, and I'm happy for you and Yi that he won that game. He fully deserved to win that one. Uh, he's got a nice position here with the white piece. The move a5 looks completely off for Hikaru. I think he's messing around a little bit too much. Like a6 isn't too bad because a6 still is quite a useful move in a lot of positions. But here it really has permanently weakened that b5 square. Yu Yang Yi has a bit of a free hand here on the king side. That being said, black is always super solid in these Karakan type of positions. And it's not that easy for white to build up a, a meaningful attack. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, Black's going to be very solid. Maybe reroute a knight to d6, play play some standard moves. I think Yang Yi, by playing queen, queen g5, you know, signaling, he's probably going to attack a little bit here and and, and play, I don't know, pawn h4, h5, and, and gain some squares. I think that's the right way to handle this. I mean, you have to put Hikaru under pressure. You, you've got to give him some tough, tough choices, throw him off his game, um, and, you know, Build on that previous previous win. Yeah, no, for sure. And we were saying earlier that against Hikaru, the one thing you have to avoid is still you cannot be frustrated by earlier losses. Do you think maybe Hikaru is a little bit frustrated? We see him still looking to the side a little bit. Maybe do you think that last game is still in his head? I uh, I mean he's been here so many times that I generally assume you know if he loses a game or it's a bad start. He has. He has enough experience and he's you know played enough of these matches that that he realizes there's there's momentum and and uh you're gonna have your your game or two that that you wish you know these bad losses that you wish you didn't have so i i, I assume he's okay after one loss but if uh, if he continues to be a tied match then then that's definitely reason for concern 
Yeah, and already in this game, he is going down fi uh, a minute on the clock. I think here this move a5 is really haunting him because it's going to be more or less impossible for black to ever create any counterplay on the king side. He goes f5, kicking the queen away, but permanently weakening that pawn on e6, yeah. which gives white a very clear target with rookie 3 and rookie 1. I mean, yeah, this looks, this e6 pawn looks like it's, it's good. You're going to get tortured for it, but Hikaru's doing it. He's got something in mind. I don't know if that's knight c8 or something, but how's, how's black going to deal with e6 pawn weakness? I think he aims to defend it with, okay, there we have it with rook f6. All right, so white's got a clear edge here, but not, an, it's not very obvious to me how you're going to improve. It should be five. I was just about to say, I like bishop b5, maybe followed by knight d3 to c5 or f4. We see h3 by Yu Yi, uh, a slow improving move. This is this is a terrible position for, for Hikaru. And I don't entirely understand why he played f5. I mean, if why that was forced. But these kind of positions, Yu Yi is going to be thrilled with, you know, just two result game. White's playing for, you know, uh, to try to win, but uh, without much risk. Uh, since the only open file is the semi-open e file. Right, queen c7, a nice move though by Hikaru. Now he could trade off the knights on e5. That wasn't possible on the previous move, as why could recapture the pawn and create a fork. Bishop e5, I think one move too late. Now Hikaru can take, and after rook takes, you have to move in knight g6, attacking the rook. Very tricky. And if you take yes. an e6, there's knight f4. So that's how Hikaru can crawl back into this game. I think with one pair of knights off the board, it's not as bad for black, because it's going to be very difficult to increase the pressure on e6. Yeah, this knight g6 resource is, is super important, because it just doesn't let white gang up on the e6 pawn in, in time. So, rook e3, knight f4. Hikaru's an active defender, and he thrives when there's active defense, and getting this knight in the game is definitely... Um, part of that agenda you don't want to have to move make moves like knight d8 or knight f8 or something i was thinking I after queen f3 here maybe even g5 just to, wow so, i don't know if that's crazy but yeah it definitely makes sense why would love to kick that knight away on f4 so if i could play h4 followed by g3 the knight's gonna have to go so with g5 you prevent that he goes queen d6 defending the pawn on e6 further a little bit more so let's see what Yu Yang Yi is going to do here. H4 makes sense to me, uh, followed, by, followed by G3. That being said, though, if you go G3, you're really asking for black to go F4 at some point. So you might want to be a little bit careful with that. Yeah, I'm not sure I, uh, how much I like white's position. If, I, if there's a good way to get rid of that knight on, on F4, I would say so. But H4 and G3 does look like it's weakening the king side too. So, yeah. And he I would be worried about getting my queen trapped. Five. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, perhaps a move like g4 is on the card. So let's see what Yu Yang Yi is going to do here. Is he going to trade himself? It feels like black is more likely to take advantage of that open h file. You can also go g3 here. But then he might have some ideas like net h3 followed by g4 and f4. It definitely feels like what Hikaru is doing is very provocative. Just like in the last game, he pushed up those G and H pawns, and that backfired uh, tremendously. So let's see if Yu Yi mm -hmm. can punish him again. Yeah, in this game, um, Hikaru is building a pretty comfortable time advantage as well. So I'm playing white here. I'm looking for ways to get the queens off based on the clock situation, based on this knight uh, improving itself. I would I would be looking for an end game if I was Yu Yi shoes. You do not want. You know, to have 20 30 seconds and fit you know face like an h file uh battery exactly and i don't like what he's done here eric he traded on g5 and played bishop to f1 now he can continue with a move like g4 or like you said king g7 followed by rook h8 and rook h6 and i think it's much more likely that black is going to do some damage here on the h file i don't really see why Yuing Yi was so eager to trade on g5 yeah just to play g3 I guess g3 and then that's the next move no matter what for for white try to attack e6 but hikaru could go for g4 himself then you have to move your queen either to g3 and you can no longer play g3 or you go queen d1 but after queen d1 maybe hikaru can go for something like rook h6 threatening moves like knight e2 and after g3 maybe then you move the knight and you want to break through the move like f4 eventually i think yeah, 
Yeah, I think Hikaru was thinking about how much is he going to try to press this position. You know, how much risk is he willing to take? Right now, Black's got this weakness on E6, but it might be manageable. Uh, but if you go any, you know, play any riskier, then then he's then he's all in. Yeah, and G4 by Hikaru. Eric, we were saying earlier how the position was in Yu Yi's favor, but Hikaru had the edge on the clock. Now it's the other way around. Hikaru is doing completely fine here, but Yu Ying Yi up a little bit of time. And he goes back to D1. So let's see what Hikaru will do here. I like the idea of moving the king up and doubling on the H file. Yeah, I mean, the king G7, rook H8, that's just going for checkmate. I think Yang Yi is really banking on playing C4 or something here to target uh, the e6 spawn because if you don't do it now then black is very very fast when it comes to the h file yeah it goes yeah. king of rook seven eight. nice move defending the pawn on e6 and now can you already go rook h8 he goes queen c7 i think like i said yu yung yi has tried to create counterplay as quickly as possible with a move like c4 but rook h8 and then even the knight can go back to f8 if you ever need to and and black can reroute the pieces and just just double up on the h-file. I think maybe, maybe white's saying, look, I'm just going to go g3, bishop g2, and even with the h-file, there's no no checkmate. But, but there's uh, also f4 coming. Yeah, I would be very scared. Looks... I'd be very scared if I was playing white. Yeah, so he goes queen c5, trying to get the queens off, but Eric, honestly, the endgame also looks bad for Black, for white in case black trades goes f4, the spawn on c5 is weak, and black's got a massive pawn center. And even there, black can go, let's say, 97, Double of the rooks, and with these pawns over here, it's very easy to get checkmated because if you go g3, black goes f3, and if you go f3, black goes g3. So let's see what Ikaru will do. Is he going to trade the queens or keep the queens on the board? Yeah, queen c5 looks pretty desperate to mess up the pawns like that, but uh, white really does not want to play this position with queens on the board. Just uh, those mating threats on the on the each file. Mm -hmm. So queen b8. I like this from from Yu Yang Yi here. I mean, um, if there's a checkmate for white, uh, I mean for black to, to go for, you know, he's like saying prove it. But crashing through in the center, maybe rook b3 here. Is this uh, is this losing? And 97 instantly by Hikaru. Apparently that's a bad move. Apparently he should have played f3, locking down a king. So then you only need to get this rook over to h6. After 97, maybe White can take on d5. Rookie 5 by Yu Yang Yi. Rookie 5. Blocking that queen. Huh, but what is his idea after f3? Like, how do you stop yourself from getting checkmated after rook h6? I did not look that far, but uh, that's a very good question. So rook h6. Pawn takes e6, king up. And are there, There's are there any nothing. more checks? You just no, rook f5, just, just sacrificing the, the rook. But here's the problem, Eric. After pawn takes g2, you're not only losing the bishop. After rook h1, black's turning mate. So you have to give up this rook. It's completely over. And Ikaru takes the lead again. Yeah, no, that... Uh, you give Ikaru a position like that, where you can use the h-file, that happens so quickly. It's, once he has the initiative, that's, uh, that's all she wrote. Yeah, this one definitely felt like a pity for Yu Yang Yi. He certainly had his chances. I think it all it all started going wrong, Eric, when he allowed the trade of knight trade of knights. I think he should have kept one pair of knights on the board. There, he definitely would have kept an advantage. But after that, it was all Hikaru who managed to get a kingside attack going. Yeah, like looking at that position, I don't even know. I thought White was playing natural moves, solid, everything was good, and then just by not doing anything, Hikaru just slowly got this H file, tried it open, came up with a mating net. But it's hard for me to even criticize what Yu Yang Yi was doing there. I mean, with a minute, two minutes on the clock, I don't know how easy it is to just formulate uh, an attack at a you know formulate a plan and come up with an attack out of nothing. I just. Missed something there, but he's probably wondering what. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely. So we see that Hikaru, Hikaru has a one point lead right now. It definitely, it definitely not a bad start for Yu Yang Yi, but given the, given the positions he had on the board, it certainly feels like he could have done better. But with all that being said, we are going on a very short break, but do not go anywhere. We will be right back.
with more Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. Become Chessable's next best-selling author. Enter the 2023 Create Your Own Course Challenge and earn a shot at $5,000. Here's your chance to bring that course in you to life. Share your passion for chess on an international scale and bank while doing it. Zero course creation experience? No problem. Grandmaster Maurice Ashley will show you the contest mechanics. Then our team will guide you through the publishing process, step by step, like we've done for over 250 authors. And best of all, the winner will have their course presented by Grandmaster Maurice Ashley himself. Visit chessable.com slash create to join. Welcome everyone. We are here with Judith Polgar, the legendary chess player, one of the greatest chess players of all time. And I went my next move. I said, no, I'm not moving my queen. I'm not moving my bishop. But actually, I'm going to give checkmate or winning great material. And I went knight e3. It works only that way. If you're an attacker, you sacrifice something, go all the way until the end. Don't chicken out in the meantime at some point. Because many times there is a point there is no way back. It's only forward. How is it to play with Kasparo? When you saw him personally, he really had this incredible energy. Judith, thank you so much for being with us, and I hope you're, hope you're ready to, to dive into the past with us. Oh, absolutely. I'm very happy to share with you some of my most memorable games. Championships presented by Coinbase. Today's matchup, Hikaru Nakamura, he's facing Yu Yang Yi and uh, Benjamin. Yu Yang Yi had to win a qualifier to get here. Can you take a look at his run? Yeah, and he had a very tough run to get here. He got through some players like Gadakomsky, Jocelyn, Bogdan Dijk. So very impressive to make it here in the first place. He's having a tough matchup, but let's hope that he can uh, flip this one run. And he also beat uh, Vashkes, as we uh, see right here, Eric. Yeah, no, I mean, every every qualifier was stacked, and I mean, the only issue that he's facing is he's facing Hikaru Nakamura, who is just 
so consistent. I mean, it almost reminds me of tennis where year after year, like, Carlos just not never gets upset in the early rounds of the SEC. It just doesn't happen. Um, I don't think I've ever seen it. So that's that's the uphill battle. A lot of the top players they're capable of being upset, but Hikaru, his online speed chess record definitely speaks for itself. Um, he does really really well in this format. Exactly, yeah. And I think Yu Yang Yi has to shake off a bit of rust. He's getting chances in these games with white, with black. He just has to take them. He He's won a game, but even that one, he let it, it slip away for a second. So let's hope that he will go into the next couple of games with a little bit more confidence. And what do you think, Eric? Is Hikaru just going to keep fooling around with moves like A3 and A4? I mean, for the time being, maybe. Uh, I think if... If you're looking at the positions and you're Yu Yi, you're pretty happy and you're just trying to improve a couple of things to, to change the result. Uh, Hikaru, it just depends how he's feeling. If he feels like it's still okay to take some risks, he might be like, you know what, I'm going to keep frustrating my opponent, giving him playable positions. Um, he seems pretty relaxed, so I'm not sure anything's going to change. Mm -hmm. And Yu Yi going here for a bit of a sloth setup, bring the bishop out to f5. Not of three by Hikaru. I guess he's just going to castle, maybe a potential c6. A pretty solid position for black. I think either Shai can be happy about the outcome of the opening. But b4 already is a, is a better move than something like a4. I think with moves like a4, you're really just, you know, throwing a move away. a4 doesn't really do anything for white, but, but b4 and a3 at least has some merit to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Hikaru is just not being very confrontational. Uh, with, with most of his openings and letting um, letting Yu Yang Yi pick whatever setup uh, he wants. And I think Hikaru is just waiting for that to, to figure out how he's going to act. Um, but uh, yeah, some very easy to play openings here. I think Hikaru definitely plays. I mean, it just depends on the opponent. And Yu Yang Yi, who, who's like, you know, there's some players that even in Blitz, they're playing pretty pretty aggressively. Playing sharp lines, Yu Yang Yi, very solid, and it really depends on the opponent to see how Yukaru is going to play. And here he'd rather just have some longer, slow games and just try to outmaneuver and outchance, I think, Yu Yang Yi when the games get a little deeper. For sure, yeah, we see the move 94 by Kaur. Perhaps he's aiming for this knight c5 jump uh, that would change up the structure a little bit. Bishop h7 by Yu Yang Yi. A pretty solid waiting move, Queen b3 by Karu. And already, you know, even though Black should be doing quite fine here, it's not that easy to see what exactly Black is going to do. They've got all of their pieces developed. Maybe something like Bishop d6 followed by Queen e7, slightly improving the position. But I'm starting to like Ikaru's position a little bit uh, more. But Eric, uh, it's it's kind of, it's not shocking that in the first round, Hikaru is playing around a little bit with a3, a4, b4. In the next round, he could potentially face Fabiano Caruana. Do you think he would go for a similar approach? Or do you think he's going to take the opening a little bit more serious in that match? I think a little bit more seriously. I mean, I uh, don't want to count out this match yet, but um, Fabiano's improved a lot when it comes to, to, to speed chess, and I just don't think Hikaru um, will feel like the, the risk is worth it against, against somebody of that caliber. Right. So, so do you feel like also he's using this first matchup to sort of see how much risk he can take, like how, how, how much he can mess around? Yeah, definitely might be a bit of a warm-up match and, and trying out maybe some, some systems or positions he's hoping to, to use in, in other matches. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a very good litmus test. First matchup, Yu Yang Yi, um, not known to be the most dangerous opponent, but he won a qualifier to get here, and those qualifiers are absolutely stacked. So there's, uh, there's definitely some clutch much potential with Yu Yang Yi's chess um, for him to even get here it means you do have to, you know, be steady and, and eliminate some some of the top top offline qualifiers. So he does have some some kick to his game, but uh, we've yet to see most of it. Right, so let's see. We see the move ninety seven here by Yu Yang Yi aiming to trade of the knights. I think a good move. Uh, however, in case you take on c5, white isn't too unhappy with that. They can recapture the b pawn. And then you always have pressure on that pawn on b7. So let's see how Hikaru is going to improve his position here. Maybe move like queen b2 or queen c3, eyeing that rook on e5. You're going to have to decide are you going to keep the pawn on d3 or go d4 eventually? What do you think, Eric? 
keep the pawn on d3 as long as possible. Um, I think if a lot of pieces get traded off, then you might play d4, but the risk now of playing an early d4 is maybe black plays rook g5 and uses the, some of the, the kingside squares for the for an initiative. I like your queen b2 move. Yeah. Pretty card goes for queen c3, eyeing that rook in e5. So right now he's threatening knight xd7, followed by taking the rook. So Yuying is going to have to move it, I guess, to like e8. And then Hikaru can also use that d4 square for his knight or his queen. Yuying Yi going aggressive right away with that move that you mentioned earlier with rook g5. Yeah, I thought here maybe like queen d4 and maybe just bring the queen a little closer to the, the king side, maybe prepare f4. But I didn't expect rook g5 this early on. Looks like it can get chased around very easily. Already, maybe pawn f4. Ikaru plays very calmly. He goes queen d4 first. Uh, moves like f4, definitely in the position. And yeah, not easy to see at all for you. You need to see how he could launch a king's side attack. He's got this rook here, but that's really the only piece. It's very difficult to bring the queen in as well. So to me, the rook looks a little bit off. I would rather have it on e8 right now. But he goes bishop f5, perhaps setting up some ideas with bishop to h3. Yeah, I think Black's just looking for any counterplay on the king side because what Black's trying to avoid is taking on c5. I think knight takes c5, Hikaru's going to maybe take back with a b pawn and then hammer the b7 pawn. I think Black's looking for any distraction, any initiative on the on the king side to avoid just trading into a passive endgame. Exactly, and look at this move, bishop f5, Eric. I think he, I think Yu Yang Yi would love to go bishop h3, and after bishop f3, he has rook takes g2, followed by... Queen. Oh wait, actually, Rook C two does <laughs> defend against that, <laughs> but uh, that would that is his idea. So yeah. let's see if he can put it to work. And for those of you who are wondering, we're playing still in the five plus one portion. And Eric, look at Ikaru's clock. He's going down to ninety seconds. Down uh, ninety seconds on the clock. What do you What do you think? Yeah, there's something there that he didn't like. So here, what happens after Bishop? h3 well now and you I can go, just go bishop f3 as there's no longer that queen g5 follow but and then you and then knight f5 okay yeah this is ah, something else yeah actually that one made a lot of sense you and you decided to trade i'm not a you i'm not a big fan because if you don't see a direct follow-up hikaru can double up on the b file and put a lot of pressure on b7 yeah i don't know why you and you went for this unless you see something concrete here because this end game when white doubles on the the file doesn't look good at all. I guess he's going to go right. rook c7 and. Yeah, k bishop h3, king h1. Seems like the stream just died, so let's hope we'll be back soon. Uh, rook b1 by Karu. Wait. Oh, it's just us here? Okay. I th think so, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't see us on the. Just the com channel. Okay. So. All right. So sorry, we're double checking, but we are we are still live. Yeah, here. I mean, we thought the uh, B file would be would be a, a problem, but Yang Yi is just playing Bishop C eight and arguing going to keep that bishop there uh, the entire time, and what's white going to do about that? I mean, bishop on c, it's very hard to target. Right, so, yeah, the bishop, the white's got a lot of pressure on the pawn on b7. Black has to go passive with moves like bishop to c8, but it's very difficult to see how he's going to further increase the pressure. Now, maybe Yu Ying Yi can use both rooks on the king side with rook e6 to f6, to cook up some counterplay. Hikaru, also look at his clock. He's down to 40 seconds, which is very unusual. Usually he's the one putting pressure on the clock. And he goes for the move queen to d6. I think a queen trade would be in his favor as then he can potentially try to dislodge Black's position with a potential d7 push. Yeah, I'm wondering what Hikaru spent all his time looking at. Because, um, I mean, the position, position for white isn't so bad. Maybe there's just something that's bothering him about it, but... Uh... And yeah, going for this timely queen trade before black can maybe build up a bigger initiative on the king's side. Mm -hmm. 
So let's see how Yung Yi is going to deal with this one. He's got the edge on the clock. I think he just has to keep moving here, keep the tension on Ikaru. Maybe Queen E8 or Queen F8. I think it it is probably bad to trade the Queens. I don't see exactly uh, why right away, but it, it feels like there's got to be something for white. Yeah, I, I think black not trading Queens is correct. Allowing allowing this pawn to get to D6 and, and maybe some, some B, B7 tactic. That didn't seem uh, necessary. Queen b8 by Hikaru, further infiltrating in black's position, g6 by Yu Yun Yi, a solid move, but this rook on g5 now might be lacking some squares, so let's see what Hikaru is going to do, he's down to 20 seconds. What I'm curious about, I was just about to say, can white push the h-pawn, or, or is he worried that it's going to weaken the, the king side a bit? Because yeah, you could, definitely there's an argument to be made here, white's got all these pawns in dark squares, black stuck with his passive bishop on c8, Hikaru might want to Figure out a way to trade off the light squared bishops and then gain full access to the um, d7 square. So he's moved his bishop back to h3, but maybe now you I think rookie four some... is rookie four coming. Okay, rook f6. I, I like that. Yeah, he goes rook f6, king g7. If black gets a time here, I think you would love to get in g5, and there he goes g5, followed by f4. And this queen on b8 is still eyeing the king, so but it's very far yeah. away, and he covered down to eight seconds. That's a tricky move, right? Queen takes pawn, then queen takes c8, and I think white wins the race. Dukaru's setting some bait there. But, uh... Oh. Yeah. What happens after rook e6? Or rook here? Is there a repetition? Right, so Yu Yang Yi can take the repetition here, but I think he really shouldn't... 30 take seconds to 9. Gotta, gotta figure out... Try how, yeah, exactly. 30 seconds to 9. You gotta take the chances you can get here. Rook f7. I think rook e7 is Queen already a draw. Isn't Queen d6? And it's... Yeah, that's definitely a missed opportunity by Yu Yang. He's up 20 seconds on the clock. He's got a good position. And you gotta take those chances. You're not gonna get those in every game. I think so. I think so. I mean, being down by, by a game is still not, yeah, uh, anything to, to worry about. But Hikaru clearly isn't very comfortable. When you see Hikaru down to 7 seconds or 10 seconds, Hikaru is such a consistently... Fast player usually means there's some level of uh, you know discomfort in the position, and that position wasn't that easy for White to play. So probably would have played on, but I also wouldn't have gotten such a decent position in the first place as uh, Yang Yi has been getting. Exactly, and we saw a very slight head shake there by uh, by Yu Yang Yi. Perhaps he didn't realize that it was already a threefold repetition after Queen to D6. But uh, yeah, definitely a big missed opportunity. That being said, it wasn't very clear though how he should have continued. And again, Eric, we have the four knights. Hikaru switching it up a little bit. We saw in the earlier game that he played the move d6. That allowed Yu Yang Yi to play knight e2. So he takes on c3 right away, not allowing White the opportunity to keep the knights on the board. And now he goes d6. So I think a very solid approach for Hikaru. Yu Yang Yi having the slightly more active position, but Hikaru having the slightly better pawn structure. Yeah, I mean, Hikaru was very comfortable playing with knights, so having this dynamic, two knights versus two bishops, I think black's what going to go move the queen out of the way, eventually free up the f-pawn for some f6 or f5, and I can, I think white has to be pretty pretty careful here um, to make sure that the black's f-file is contained. I guess yeah, this is a bit of a trick here, you know, knight h4, if h6, just take on e7 and play knight g6, nice little pin. Yep, that's a nice uh, point uh, there. Here, I can take and goes knight g6, and they go up the exchange. So, Hikaru moved this king out of the way first. Now, the question is can Yu Yang Yi go f4 here, or is his bishop just getting trapped after f6? He can also go for moves like queen h5, but then I think Hikaru might go for something like queen e8, followed by f6 anyway. Yeah, yeah, the queen e8 moves pretty annoying. Because you do want to play queen h5, you do want to bring the pieces in, you want to open up the uh, f file. Uh, get the bishops more active. Um, Black does have this queen e8 move, preparing f6. Yeah, so a typical Hikaru position here. This is also a little bit provocative, but this this position this position is actually fine for him, and that's why we see Yu Yang Yi burning a lot of time. He's probably looking at all of these ideas like f4, queen h5, looking for some sort of breakthrough, but it does not seem to be there. And he takes an e7. 
voluntarily to me, Eric, that seems very unnecessary. I don't know why you would give the bishop arrow. I like think that. he just didn't know where he's gonna put the bishop after black plays f6 next, and then maybe f5. So, um, bit of a panic move, uh, I think we could say, but uh, didn't like where where that dark square bishop was, was was headed, and decided just to trade it off, you know, proactively. But now Hikaru's yes. position has to be probably pretty okay, right? I mean, once the bishop pair has been has been removed, I guess this is Ye Yu Yang Yi's idea. I get, I'm going to get f4 in first. That means I'm going to get this f file pressure and try to play with the initiative a little bit there. So, mm -hmm. at least it's, it's consistent. Yeah, so I'm a little bit surprised with the move queen g6 by Hikor. It very easily allows white to go f4. And now, like I said, it feels like white has got a slight edge and very easy moves. So he can now just recapture with the rook, go queen f3, rook a f1. You never really mind this trade on b3 because it uh, it, it improves your pawn structure. So Yu Yang Yi having some easy moves here and it's not that easy for Hikaru to deal with this pressure on the FL. Yeah, you don't want to trade as you just mentioned, but if you don't trade as black, you're looking at playing f6 at some point because that FL pressure is going to be too much. So some big decisions for Hikaru. He knows rook f1 is coming and are you going to defend? You have seven square. Very good question. Yeah, no, I think maybe he's looking at a move like d5, although white's just going up upon there. So mm -hmm. already it's very difficult to see what you're going to do. If you take on b3, then white can recapture with either pawn, followed by knight f5 and rook g4. That also looks too much. So uh, how are you defending the f7 pawn here? White is simply trying to take an e6, followed by rook takes f7. Hikaru's not getting positions that... Uh... I mean, he wants to be getting against Yu Yang Yi. This, is a, this isn't his will house. I mean, white is just slightly better, can push, and you're not forcing your opponent to make tough decisions. So he's probably a little frustrated. I can't hear what he's saying, but I, it wouldn't surprise me at all. The car was very frustrated at himself right now if we're just kind of getting the, the kind of positions that Yu Yang Yi thrives in. Yeah, and... <laughs> Talking about frustration, I just looked at the camera, we saw there the head shake out of disgust, like, yeah, what what kind of position have I got myself into? He goes d5, but here white is going up a pawn. It's impressive, though, that he does go for this pawn sacrifice, because if you don't, your position is just terrible. But here, there are still chances to hold, so let's see how he will try to survive here. Yeah, black's down one pawn, that's maybe not the end of the world, but f7 is also loose. I think uh, Hikaru's counting on uh, putting uh, some pressure on maybe white's isolated pawn. I don't know, maybe on e2 or something. Just just playing against some of the loose pawns in the position and being tricky. I don't think Hikaru went for this, thinking there'd be full competition. He just preferred this kind of position than a very passive uh, position on the f-file. Yeah, that seems to be the right decision. Queen a5, the pawn on a2 is weak, like you mentioned earlier. Now, black is down a very clean pawn, but their king is no longer in danger. Uh, White's gonna perhaps have to make a passive move like Queen B2, and that's what Yu Yang Yi does. That being said, though, Eric, Yu Yang Yi is gonna get full control over the only open yeah. file of the, on the board. You're gonna have to make a move like B6, and after Rook F1, it's very difficult to see what, what Black is gonna do. You you can also go Rook E7, maybe H3, make sure you never get background checkmated. So it's all Yu Yang Yi in this game. So let's see if he can put this one away. Yeah, I, I mean the end games are all gonna be good for White here. I think. I think knowing Hikaru, he's just going to be slippery with his one queen. But as you mentioned, outside of the queen, white controls the e-file. Black is passive and, and down a pawn. So just not a, not a good recipe you know, for, for, for counterplay. But as long as that queen is on d2 and harassing, I think being e still has to be pretty careful. He goes a3, slightly surprised by that one. It looks like a fine move, but for now, queen b4 is not possible as it hangs the pawn on c2. Because rookie two, now the queen swings back to g5. At some point, I would go h3, g5. just making sure you never get background check, background checkmate. But I like queen b5, as a queen trade would uh, work out pretty well for white. Yeah, h3 at any moment looks like a move to burn. Um, the question is, how is white planning to try to convert this? And maybe that's going to involve rookie seven, and bring the queen over to g6 or something. Maybe rookie yep. seven. Yeah, rookie seven definitely looks like a nice move. I think if you can double up the rooks, it feels like white is, is getting close to winning, as then they're not only up a pawn, but also having a dominant position. But like you said earlier, Hikaru being annoying with that queen, and there he goes to F2. 
I'm not sure what the hesitation is for, for White in terms of certain moves, but I, I think Yu Yang is just like, he's not in a rush. I was saying maybe you should try to threaten checkmate as White, but the other argument is you can just slowly improve your pieces like this and attack some of Black's pawns. Uh, maybe Rook E6 here. Just a little worried about the end game if I'm playing White. How many pawns can I trade? Let's say Rook E6, B5. Is that a good trade? Is that a bad trade? I was thinking it would be easier to go for checkmate sooner. Yeah, it feels like white's pawn structure slightly improves, as then you have two connected passers. But blacks, the, the black rooks get active, so I think that's what you want to avoid. So after b5, maybe you take and go a5, although that a pawn can also turn into a weakness. So I definitely like what Ikara has done here with the move rook b8 followed by b5. Yeah, I mean, I just don't feel like white is maximized having the e-file. I mean... I think the rook should be on e6 or, or e7 or e4. But he's going for that similar idea that you mentioned. Um, not taking on b5, playing a5. Maybe rook, rook a1 now and uh, utilizing something. Rook Is rook e6 playable? Maybe that hangs c2. Right, so maybe e6. These are the kind of positions Yu Yang Yi has to convert. He has a chance this match. It's going to have to be these pawn up positions. You have to exactly. show Ikaru that he can't go just sacrifice the pawn. Uh, rookie 1, that move to me looks very odd. I don't know what he's planning to do after rook a8. I mean, to me, c3 followed by d4 made a lot of sense, as then you can also always go rook to a2. But here, aren't you just losing your pawn after rook a8? Um, is he planning some sort of queen f7 or just to sacrifice the... I, I, For rook a8, I guess Yu Yang is planning something where you give up the pawn for a counter play. Alright, Hikaru's played b4. Now perhaps just rook e4. Black can take the pawn on a5, but you'll win that b4 pawn uh, back right after. And then you still have the two connected passers. That being said though, Eric, might there be some queen a1, queen e5 business at the end? Perhaps because that you have to take the queen. Yeah. Yeah, black can trade into the rook end games, probably as you mentioned, two con you know the connected pass pawns. So Ikaru has to uh, has to defend before. Can't go into the end game yet. Down a pawn in the end game, you know, four versus three. A lot of those are drawn, but this one would not be drawn because because those are connected pass pawns. On, but now. Wait, does this allow Hikaru? Can he take? Yeah, he can just take and take on C2 at the because end. Now, take now on he's C2 completely and then fine. Oof. Yeah, rook C4, Queen F2 now. Eric, this queen one F2 could is a very good move. Yes. This one could completely turn around. Rook G5 is also there. I mean, there's also the option that Yu Yi could lose here. Yeah. No, Hikaru is. He, he's annoying with his queen. We, we thought it might happen, but. Uh, Never allowed white to get in the position where the, the, the past D pawn or the past C pawn could have been pushed. Just neutralize the, the structure very comfortably. So queen b3, Everything let's see if draw he... here. Yeah. yeah, but Hikaru might even go for the win here. I mean, yeah, queen e2, there we have it. If you go queen b2, you hang the pawn, and otherwise you're going to allow rook a, a2. And goes rook d1, queen e2 here. I think in a time scramble, you definitely would prefer to be black here. Yeah, well, white has the liabilities. I mean, this g2 pawn is going to get hit sometimes, and the d pawn, the, the, the d3 pawn is loose as well. So, Hikaru can definitely play this risk-free. Um, I think he just wants to... He's not expecting anything, but he knows it doesn't hurt to try. He bent, you know, he's, he's good at time scrambles, good at pre-moves, good at playing positions on, just tiring his opponent out or running down the clock. Suits him just Yeah, fine. exactly. Even if this game ends in a draw, he shaves another minute of the clock. There is still Rookie 5, Rookie 1. Okay, Rookie 5, he's going up a pawn here. It's probably still a dead draw, but hey, looking where he came from, this is definitely progress for him. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he you know, takes away more time. Um, only Black can try to win this, so... Mm -hmm. The one thing you have... Wait, Queen 8 I think... Uh, queen e3. Is there a way for white to make a perpetual here, or? Yeah, it looks like it looks like it should be close to a perpetual. Because how do you? You're gonna lose it. You have to go king of five. A king g6. Now, no wait. Now he's 
wiggling out of it. King h6, he car keeps the game going. G5, good move. And you have ah, to be careful, yes. not allow. Queen e5 is coming, yeah. Okay, g4. It's getting tricky with this g pawn. Black has ideas to checkmate white and with the evil bar. Oh, that's a good check. Yeah, white's just check looking again. for perpetual here, but if Hikaru finesses his king properly, he might be safe on g3. King f2, maybe? I guess you, you just keep checking. Or, or g3 also seems fine, followed by king g2. That gives you a little bit more breathing room, but Yu Yang Yi just lost some time. He looks a bit confused there, Benjamin. I was just focused on the position. I was like, what's going on? But um, that's 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 a great win for Hikaru. I mean, that's what what can we say? Didn't, that's didn't a have to do very too much there. costly loss for Yu Yang <laughs> like, Yi. He was up upon he, yeah, he either lacked or something or, or, or what happened, but he just yeah, he should yeah, have never that's lost what I was that game. About. I mean, as you mentioned, there's ways to draw that position and, and uh, you just can't afford, against Hikari, you just can't afford any slip-ups. No, yeah, he, he should have won that game and a draw was already a pretty disappointing result, but to lose that one, it's really a little bit too much. Uh, here we have a pretty symmetrical, I don't know how to call this, a, a Kale system. Something like that. Black can just take on c5. The mm -hmm. position is just completely equal, but Hikaru doesn't mind. He just wants to, you know, play the game of chess and try to, you know, put pressure later on. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like, Hikaru is very result-oriented. You know, he doesn't always have, like, the cleanest matches or the best positions, but his goal, you know, the pressure he puts on his opponents, that it, it, it wears you down. So, um, even the positions he's getting from the opening, like, I wouldn't say any of them are, like, really special, but He's been able to outplay Yu Yang Yi in the late stages of almost every game, and that's why he's uh, up 4-2. Um, just had just been steadier throughout uh, throughout the first part of the match so far. Right, and we're getting word from one of Hikaru's mods that Hikaru wants to play every first possible move in this match. So I guess that's why he started with A3, then A4, then B4, then B3. So I guess after this, it's going to be C3, then C4, D3, D4... And I guess at the end, maybe even knight e3 and knight h3. So he's, uh, yeah, definitely using this 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 match as a warm up or to mess around with. How would you feel, uh, Benjamin, if uh, your opponent was was playing you in a match, but they also had a side quest to try all these different first moves? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's definitely a little bit annoying if he's just <laughs> messing around with you like that, and you cannot win. I mean, he you young he has won a game right but it feels like he should be on a, on a better score so I, I would definitely be a little bit uh, frustrated however with black hikaru has stopped messing around now he's just playing e4 e5 but maybe in the bullet you know he's uh yeah he's gonna uh, play moves like b5 or a6 again on the first move i like white's position here already i mean i expect he's gonna maybe just take on c6 and play king e2 but um very easy to play for white and just Small pressure against the weakness on c6. Rook yeah, here c1. white just, just has a, has a pretty c1. solid edge. Yeah. Just move one of the rooks to, to c1. You have pressure on the c6 pawn. a5 makes sense though from black. Black would love to trade off their weakness for the pawn on b3 or go bishop to a6. But yeah, here we actually have a game where Ricardo has a pretty solid edge out of the opening. Yeah, and like Yu Yang Yi, I mean, we're looking at the match, it's 4 2. His style, he's very consistent. I don't expect him to really change anything. So what we're seeing now, I mean, he's going to try to improve maybe his play here and there. But in terms of opening approach or even just general approach, he, he's a solid player. He's going to play these positions even if he needs to win. Um, he'll still be playing some like slot positions or, or, or Queen's Gambit. Um, he's gotten to, to his current level by, by being very consistent with his chess style. So... I don't expect uh, any any adjustments there. Besides that, he's just telling himself, "Look, I gotta, I gotta improve my play uh, in these in these end games in these middle games." Yeah, I think I he's just a little bit to too hesitant. Favorite. Yeah, I don't like, expect him to be a favorite if he if he switches up against Ikaru. He's gotten good. He has to trust the positions he's been getting, 
I just trust that he's going to convert at a higher percentage. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I think his his overall style of play is, is completely fine. In this game, he's got a slightly worse position. But again, I think he's just a little bit too hesitant. We saw in that last game, he got a very clean extra pawn. But then, why not just go rookie 7? Improve the rooks, increase the pressure on black. He was moving around without a real plan. And then Hikaru was able to create enough compensation. And all of a sudden, the advantage was, uh, was gone. And there have been many games like that. So, he really just has to take the chances he, he's getting. It's still only a two-point lead. That being said, I think Hikaru's got good chances to increase that lead in this game right here. Yeah, sometimes you're playing against Hikaru and you're kind of waiting for that game that's going to give you confidence and 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 give you, the, you know, like you like when you play Hikaru, you you second guess a lot of the tactics and calculation based on knowing who you're playing. Um, but he's he he he, just, he has to trust himself and he has to be a little more assertive in his games cuz he's not going to get those easy chances. It's going to it's going to have to be sloppy regardless. Um Right, yeah, but there will also be games where, uh, yeah, you, you might not get a whole lot of chances. That being said, I, I don't know what is the deal with uh, Hikaru, Eric. Maybe it is the fact that he's streaming. When you're streaming, you're going to talk a lot, you're going to explain a lot of plans and ideas, and then you look at your clock and you're down two minutes. And that might be what's happening right here with Hikaru going below two minutes on the clock. I've been seeing that he's behind on the clock in a couple of games, and I feel like he's aware of that and he wants the games to take more time but he hasn't been low on time because he's hated his positions like this feels a little bit like Hikaru's definitely trying to shake off the rust I think what was he on holiday the past week Benjamin so maybe he's trying to get as much chess in as possible um, and just go through the process because these are not positions that if you, if you see Hikaru play against Magnus and he's slightly better he plays fast he plays practical he's not like if he was if he was playing in a really intense match there's no way he's spending a minute in a, in, in a middle game position. He's a very and practical player. After a long thing, he went B4. I'm sure he was calculating to move A3 by Yu Yi, but Yu Yi goes Knight D7 instantly, followed by C5. So there, perhaps, Hikaru lost a lot of time unnecessarily because uh, Yu Yi did not go down the line he was calculating. Now, I think after Knight D5, Black should be doing completely fine. Thing on G2 is not a good idea for the moment as it runs to Rook G1 and you lose the G7 pawn. But Yu Yang Yi having a completely fine position here and up almost two minutes on the clock. Maybe he can get some chance in this game. Yeah, the main thing is like Hikaru is very good at running up the score and like winning two, three, four games in a row. Yang Yi lost the last game, even here. Go back to the drawing board. A draw with black is totally fine. If you're up down two games, it doesn't mean you have to like start forcing things with, with black here. So. Just, just playing something stable and securing that half point, I think, just uh, and give himself another chance with white next next game. That should be the goal. Right, so we'll see rook bc8, rook ac1 by Karu. Now, there is an ID7 attacking the bishop and the pawn on a3, but white can just go bishop to b2. So, black's doing pretty fine here, but I don't really see a way to improve the position. He goes knight d7, bishop b2. So let's see what he will do here. Maybe something like knight b6, but I guess White's just doing completely fine as well after bishop b5. Yeah, bishop b5. It's it's a no-risk position. Um, and one of those things where if you make a small mistake as black, you might lose the a pawn, and then White gets a little bit of a of a push. So Carver's probably pretty happy here, and he's preparing bishop b5, just getting into an endgame. On paper, I think this is the section where if you're Yu Yang Yi, you're counting on scoring the most in the five five minute section. And the closer Hikaru gets to the next next segment, um, the greater greater his chances. Yeah, and I feel like Hikaru is slowly but surely getting an edge on the board here. He's putting some pressure on the knight on c5, which is still defending the pawn on a4, but you're in all sorts of pins, and it's it's really difficult to see what exactly white, uh, what exactly black is going to do. That being said, look at the clock. Hikaru dropping now to 30 seconds. He's definitely slower than than he usually is. Yeah, I I, I swear he's like using this as warm up or something because there are certain days where Hikaru just doesn't get in time trouble. He plays fast, sees everything, and yeah, these positions are not not hard positions again though i mean white out of you know hikaru might be down a minute and 20 seconds but back in a position where where he's pushing the pace and yu yang yi 
has to be very accurate at the end of the game to, to hold things here. There's there's some yep. looseness, you know, the knight is a bit loose on c5, the pawn on a4. And Hikaru is definitely cooking up a tactic somewhere here. Some sort of knight so, c4 at the right moment. Yeah, knight c4, perhaps followed by knight a5 or knight b6. Yu Yang Yi could perhaps move this knight at some point, let's say someone like knight b3, and try to simplify the position. I guess he wouldn't mind a draw, but Hikaru, of course, could give, keep the game going with something like knight c4. So let's see what Yu Yang Yi is going to do here. Who Who is up 50 seconds on the clock? Yeah, but we need a move for block here. I mean, knight c4 is coming. And... Uh... This is easy to blunder. I mean, knight b4, uh, knight b6, sorry, is, is a move here. There's some discovered checks in certain positions. I I wouldn't feel that comfortable, uh, Benjamin, if I was playing black here. All of a sudden, just, how do I deal with knight b6? Yeah, knight b6 is annoying. Knight a5 even moves like e5, uh, damaging a black spawn structure and also setting up the idea of knight to d6. And look at the clock, Eric. Now it's evening up. Yu Yang Yi dropping down to wait, but take a 95, that looks very good for white. Yes, take a 95. And of course, he spots it right away. Yeah, now. And this is the worst kind of thing to be in, to be slightly worse against Hikaru. No chance of a win, just trying to hold, to, you know, hold the draw. This is a nightmare. Yeah, and it came from nothing. I mean, Hikaru just outmaneuvered him um, during crunch time. Yeah, rook d8, king c3. Okay, he gives up the a pawn, but he he's going for counterplay on the king side. However, it feels like black's counterplay is coming way too slow. And also, this bishop on b7 is feeling very very uncomfortable after a potential rook c7 move. Yeah, rook c7, rook a7 traps the bishop, right? So that's what black's contending with. Why they're not playing rook g1 is this rook c7 move. Rook but, c7, bishop a6, I guess. So but there was king c5. That's right. That's right. But now you just take the pawn and black is completely stuck over here. It goes g5, but Ikaru keeping the status quo on the king side. And I think this one is just over. You cannot move your This is masterful, Benjamin. That, that black can't move. Ikaru is just going to play king b6 and push the a pawn. The bishop on c8 is stuck. And black's king can't cross the position because of the way the pawns are. So this is just like Ikaru's put you Yu Yang Yi in a bind. And that is absolutely demor you know, demoralizing. Yeah, no, for sure. Now Hikaru no goes up three play. games. That was a very tough loss for Yu Yang Yi. And this is what we were talking about earlier. You're, you're going to have your games where you will get your chances against Hikaru, but there will also be games that are, are going to be tough. So if you don't take your chances, it, you're, you're going to have a very tough time against Hikaru. Yeah, like this, I mean, Yu Yang Yi cannot feel like he's playing terribly, but the result, it's already 5-2. I mean, and uh, just... Same positions, decent positions, but Hikaru wins at the end of the day. And that last game was like a really, really good example of, uh, of some of Hikaru's advantages over Yu Yang. For sure, yeah. So he goes h6 here, taking the bishop on g5. I don't know why Yu Yang Yi play knight d2. I liked this move knight h4 much better in the last game. Here the knight is just a little bit more passive. And now again, he has to decide, is he going to trade on, a, on e7? Or just drop the bishop back. I would personally decide to keep the bishops on the board and still try to go for that f4 push. You can also go bishop h4 if you're feeling very optimistic, but uh, Yu Yi goes for the more timid bishop to e3. So king h8 and f5. I guess they're going to trade f5 versus f4. White's looking to open up. Black wants to probably play f5. And Okay, maybe not. All right, so knight g6 by Hikoru stopping the f4 push. Queen h5 is a move here, hitting the knight, or maybe g3 th setting up that f4 push as well. Let's see which one he's going to go for, but I think he Hikaru likes his position here. The, the position is semi-close, so the knights are pretty, pretty good, and white's got this damaged pawn structure. But what, what would you do differently? What do you suggest if you're in Yu Yang Yi's corner here? And, I mean, it's 5-2, to two, he's lost a couple of games in a row. What would you change? Would you make any adjustments or keep trusting yourself, keep getting in the same positions and hope to improve? It's a good question. I think with white, he is getting fine positions. With black, I think the position he got in the last game is fine as well. Perhaps just avoid those end games where you're going to be a little bit worse because Hikaru is very good at poking and prodding, asking small questions, and then, you know, 
also putting pressure on the clock. Th those games are tough, so I think he has to avoid those. I think he has to try to go after Hikaru when he's given the chance and just put him away because there have been games like that where he uh, he has not used his chances to to the full masters. So, but let's.